my cultural milestone in seventh grade. That was another one. Oh, man, because in junior high, all the grammar schools in Norwood, Massachusetts came together for the one junior high school, and all of a sudden it was like the United Nations in there. Now we had Catholics and Protestants. <laughs> and one table of Jews. There was, one, there was a table of Jews in the, in the lunchroom, and I remember looking at them, and they were exotic. The Jewish girls, there was something about them. They had the dark hair, and the, 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 they had eyes, and uh, <laughs> I guess they all had eyes, but they had special eyes, I don't know. And I, was, I just was intrigued by them. They knew how to wear makeup, that was the thing. You know, in seventh grade, that's when the girls just start to wear makeup. And the Jewish girls, they, they just, they, they knew how to blend down, do you know what I mean? Jewish girls blended down through the neck area. The Irish Catholic girls had that harsh line of the jaw, you know? You know, like they just like wiped it carelessly on their face on the way to school while they were smoking with the other hand, whatever. Whatever, the white neck. But I remember, I swear, I remember looking at the Jewish girls and I'm sitting across from my friend, John Mitagai. Mitagai was like, he was the child of divorce. There was no divorced kids back then, you know? This kid was, you know the divorced kids, they always knew stuff before everybody else. You know what I mean? They, they were just like, you know, they, they just, they had the inside track on stuff. And so I, I always knew to listen to Mitigai, but I'm looking at the table, I said, I wanna talk to those girls, Debbie Shapiro and Debbie Mahler and you know, Debbie Aaron. they were all Debbies. <laughs> But I wanted to talk to them. I said it to Mitigai, look at those girls. And Mitigai says to me, he's, I remember he's so cocky, sitting there with his milk. He's like, don't even bother. They only date other Jews. <laughs> they only date other Jews. That's like a challenge, isn't it? Guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, guys, they like, we like challenges. Guys throw challenges in front of us, we're gonna take them, even in seventh grade, right? Like guys, you know when you're driving, this is like what a guy does. Guy's driving on the highway. He's alone, right? You gotta go to the bathroom. You see that sign, it says rest area, 500 feet. Then they give you the challenge. Down at the bottom of the sign, it says next rest area, 35 miles. You're like, oh, you don't think I can make it, huh? I'll make it. You drive the 35. So I took the challenge. I went up to that table. I started flirting with those Jewish girls. They liked me. They found me interesting. They found me, they found me waspy. <laughs> Which I'm not, I'm Catholic, but Jews can't tell the difference between Catholics and wasps. That's their blind spot. Everybody has one. But that was it. That got me obsessed with Jewish girls. Ever since that, I started, started dating them in junior high. Just those, you know, at first it's those innocent little junior high dates. You know, you just follow them home from school. <laughs> Nowadays, they call that stalking. <laughs> but it was innocent back then. And I would go over there, go to their houses. They, they had different houses. They all lived in the same section of town. It was like a certain section. And they had different, their houses were different. They, like we had, our garages were beside our houses. Their garages were just, they were part of the house. Do you know what I mean? Just different, everything. I'd go in there, they had like, they had, paintings on the walls with real paint on them. You know, like not like a print of a lighthouse like we had. And they'd have, uh, their mothers weren't there. Like their, my, my mother was always right there hovering over you. The Jewish girls, their mothers were out doing gardening or off doing charity work. They were, Jews were very busy. My mother was always right there at the sink when you came in. She'd be like, oh, hi. Yeah. Sometimes there was nothing in the sink. She'd still be right there. Like, What's she doing at that sink? But you'd make out, they knew how to make out those Jewish girls. They made out with abandon. There was something about it. There was a freedom to it. Like it, like it wasn't a sin. <laughs> like there was absolutely nothing wrong with it, you know? And they had the dogs. Their dogs, would, they had the fluffiest little dogs. I'd never seen such clean little dogs. Their dogs smelled good. And they wouldn't let them out. I'd go to the door, they'd be like, don't let the dog out. <laughs> Jewish dogs never went out. <laughs> Our dogs never came in. <laughs> Don't let the dog in. That's what my mother used to say. There was a dog on our porch. I was like 12 years old before I realized it wasn't even our dog. <laughs> he just, you know, got a lot of scraps. There was five kids in our family. 
but it was nice. I liked it. That's what it continued. It continued on through through uh, high school, dating just Jewish girls and Lainey Mandel, and hmm, oh, it was great. <laughs>